In this video, we will set up the mesh, run the simulation, and analyze the temperatures that the PCB component will reach. Let's get started. The mesh is the set of cells the model will be divided into in order for the software to compute the results. The solution is calculated for each cell. Hence, more cells mean longer computing time, but also higher accuracy, while less cells reduce the accuracy of the results, but the solution requires less time to compute. Balancing these two aspects is essential. For the scope of this example, we are going to specify global and local sizing to limit the number of mesh cells and get a faster solution that is still accurate. Let's start with the global sizing. Go to the global fidelity settings and select curvature. This will help us control the size of the cells on and near curved bodies. For more information, you can access the help interface by pressing F1. Then click on the global fidelity button to find the link to the online help to learn about the size function methods. Press F1 again to exit the help menu. Go back to the global fidelity and click use predefined settings to deactivate it. Set the minimum size to three millimeters and set both maximum sizes to 60 millimeters. Then change the growth rate value to 1.3 and the curvature normal angle to 32 degrees. This value is automatically converted to radians. Make sure all objects participating in the simulation are visible. Rotate the model to see the top view. Click and drag a box to select the entire housing, except the outlets. Then, while holding control, click and drag a box around the internal chips, heat sinks, and the capacitor to deselect them. Next, right click on a face of the volume and select Face, Show All Faces to unhide the top face. While holding the control key, Click the face to select it. Now, set a local fidelity sizing of 20 millimeters. Hide the top face again. From a top view, drag a selection box around all the PCB components and set a six millimeter sizing. Save the model. Press Solve to start the simulation. Deactivate the contours. Once the green bar covers half of the hexagon, the mesh should be completely generated and is ready to be displayed. Click on the Show Mesh button in the results next to the Solve button. Rotating the model, we can see that the mesh is finer in certain regions and coarser in others. We can use the plane to view the mesh inside the model by translating or rotating it. You can see that the solids included in the simulations are meshed too. The solution should take about 10 minutes to finish. 
Turn off the mesh and turn on the contours to visualize the temperature. In general, it's a good idea to keep CPUs operating below 80 degrees Celsius. In our case, the maximum temperature is around 71 degrees Celsius, so we are well below that threshold. Our cooling system is working as expected. Compared to being placed in air that is at rest, the flowing air helps the heatsink extract more heat from the CPUs. Indeed, forced convection enhances the heat transfer compared to simple natural convection. Let's look at the other chips. As you can see, depending on their position on the PCB, each has a different temperature. This is due to the different airflow the components are exposed to, which affects the amount of heat the air will extract. It's interesting to notice that the component connected to the smaller heatsink shows a much lower temperature compared to the two larger chips. This shows, once again, how a heatsink can drastically reduce the temperature of an object. Now, switch the variable displayed to velocity. Deselect the contours and activate the streamlines. The flow path is similar to what we saw in the explore stage. Explore the model yourself and then save it. This concludes our analysis of heat management of CPUs.